Hey, what up ladies and gents, it's your favorite Asian robot right here, hopefully your favorite official content creator for the first Descendant, and today, I'm gonna give you guys the bunny bossing build. If you guys have not yet seen the farming build, you should go check that out because a lot of the stuff is already covered there, but this one is gonna focus on the bossing build, and it's gonna show you guys uh, basically how we structure things and how we have made bunny from a farmer into a bosser, all right? Here we go. Now, this is the build we've been working on for weeks. We've optimized, changed certain things, and adjusted it so that it'll be just perfect. You can see that uh, both the bossing and the farming builds are capable of being switched around. Now, this will actually change in future when we can have individual sockets, therefore allowing for even more damage in future. All right, so do look forward to that. But for the bossing build, all right, this is what it's going to look like. Now, I'm going to go through it step by step, but first, before we do that, Kaz is in the background. <laughs> Yes. Discord cut her off a bit there, but she said hi. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, I'm going to show you everything about the bossing build, so let's get started. And of course, excuse the coughing, I'm still in recovery, but you know how it is. And for those that are wondering, yes, I'm okay. The doctor said I'm fine, but honestly, because of my weak lungs, my cough will take four to five weeks to heal. So, there you go. Okay. Reactor, I'm still using the same one, Secret Garden, with electric singular uh, skill power boost ratio. I've also got a gold electric skill power boost. Now, if I could get a 0 0.085, this would be even better, but oh well. And skill critical hit damage at gold as well. All right, for my auxiliary components, I like to use a two set of the supernova memory. Um, Slayer's four set is great and, of course, offers the most damage increase, but realistically, I just don't like the Slayer set, so I have not slaughtered it in. I've got a supernova memory and a supernova processor. These come with base stats of defense, so not as good as hit points, but they've got gold rolls, so it's fine. <laughs> excuse me now for my hp auxiliary support i've got a double hp roll and for my hp support sensor i've got a max hp max mp roll if you really really want to you can get one that has um mp recovery in combat as well uh, i found that it doesn't really help as much for bunny but if you want to use it you absolutely can all right so i'll just demonstrate with this on okay but i generally have the consumable drop rate increase because i'm using bunny most of the time elsewhere for farming and i like getting consumables okay so that basically covers the reactor and external components now weapons will be covered separately in their own build guides i'm sorry the python is coming very soon okay and the rest of the weapons will follow as well um for the bossing build let's get into the modules right now okay i'm going to show you a couple of things that is important first we're going to go through that and then i'm going to explain the build you will see very little difference between this build and the farming build they're literally interchangeable, and I've done the catalyst slots in that way so that you need the farming, go for the farming. You need the bossing, you can just switch over. One tab, that's it. N now your damage is going to be a bit lower than a dedicated bossing build, but it's still pretty good, and I've had no trouble overcoming most things. Okay? So, here's what I have, all right? First and foremost, what you need to understand is how high voltage works. High voltage is the crux of this whole thing, but... When you look at your basic lightning emission skill, it only has a skill power modifier at baseline of 148.7%. Slap high voltage on, and this, all right, lightning emission will transform into the high voltage version of lightning emission. This one at baseline has 250.5% skill power modifier. This drastically changes how much damage you can deal. It also has a better range and a very different cooldown, all right? The cooldown in the initial version is 30 seconds, all right, with the duration lasting 20 seconds. The high voltage version has a cooldown of 22 seconds, all right? So it transforms that. It does have a slightly higher electricity cost, but high voltage is excellent, so you want that. Now, that is the most important thing. You have to realize that it has a higher skill power modifier, which means you deal more damage naturally, okay? High voltage lightning emission hits three targets. Okay, it doesn't pulse a ring anymore. It just zaps three targets, all right, with a single bolt of electricity. So it's very much better for single target. Now, <laughs> when it comes to your damage, right, most of your damage is going to come from electric specialists, giving you 8.81.2% bonus to your electric skill power. You've also got spear and shield, which, because this one's modifier is way above the 160% breakpoint your spear and shield will give you more than iron defense, okay? So spear and shield is used here. Now, the other thing that's important in this build is you want to make sure that the duration of this thing lasts just enough so that the cooldown and duration are almost synced up. 
Now, I have chosen to do away with Nimble Fingers because it is not necessary in this build. Instead, if you just use Battle of Stamina, sure, it's not as good as HP Amplification in terms of the max HP that you get, but the duration of this goes from 20 seconds to 21.8 seconds, meaning you've only got a 0.2 second downtime on your Lightning Emission. Okay, so this is pretty much how it goes. Now, for your other mods, max increased HP is right here, so you already know about that. Skill Expansion stays in the build. Um, technically, some of the more glass cannon builds take out skill expansion to go for even more crit rate and even more crit damage, which I do not disagree with, all right? It's just that I don't like the base range on this. The base range of 9 meters when I'm spinning around the uh, target was difficult to work with, so I felt that skill expansion was still necessary, although it does reduce the potential overall damage. You can hit insanely hard if you take out skill expansion and shove in both front lines and, uh, what's the one? Emergency measures <laughs> see both of these can be equipped along with skill insight and skill concentration you level them all up you know with the right slots and bada bing bada boom you've got the most insane bossing build but your base range will go down to you know if i were to save this right now my base range would go down to the nine meters which is not exactly good so for that reason skill expansion da -da -da, saves me all right this is what really helps me uh you know spin around while still being efficient with the damage okay um, skill insight and skill concentration are absolutely necessary here because you will deal your most damage when you crit, okay? Being able to crit with this particular build, <laughs> excuse me, just to show you guys, the crit multiplier is 3.445 times. So you're dealing 3.4 times damage whenever you crit. You crit with a 22.3% crit rate, all right? And you can push this even higher if I were to upgrade front lines, but again, uh, I can't quite do that right now because... The, they haven't yet implemented the different catalyst slots for different builds. So in order to not ruin my farming build, I sort of have this setup going instead. Okay. Now, the other thing that I'll explain is singular specialist. Why not focus on singular? Because focus on singular um, has a skill power modifier of 68.2%. Singular specialist has 76.1%. The difference is not drastic, but I didn't really need the cooldown on this one, so I took a higher skill power modifier with Singular Specialist, squeezing in just a little bit of extra damage, which worked really well for me. And the last but not least is Dangerous Ambush. When you land a skill attack while the enemy is not targeting you, your skill power is up by 24.9%. On a skill attack against an immobilized enemy, the skill power is 49.8%. So this is pretty good, all right? And this is how the build works. The build works by going in, zapping everything for as much damage as possible. You're not going to get a 10 second devourer kill with this one, but you can get a fairly efficient devourer kill with this pers uh, with this version of the build, and we do it all the time. Um, I think my fastest was about 30-ish seconds, assuming he doesn't go into his enrage phase. You can squeeze in 30-ish seconds with this build. It can get better, like I said, but I'll have to wait until they can do the flexible slots for different builds. Then you might see a 20, 30-ish second kill. I still won't go down to the 10 seconds one because that's total glass cannon, but, you know, this is okay for me. Like, for me, this is fine, and I am satisfied with this. So this has worked well for me, and I don't think I could uh, make it any better than it is right now. You could, of course, skew a few things, but I like to be able to survive. You do zero DPS if you're dead, so I prefer not to be dead, okay? All right, now you've heard me talk about it, I'm sure you guys want to actually see this in action. So, since I have my Chaos here, let's say we go mess up the Devourer for fun, shall we? Hey, okay. yeah. yeah, let's do it. <laughs> if you guys hear a bit of the robotics, actually, you know what? I fought the Pyromaniac last time, so we'll just go into a public Pyromaniac match. Let's go okay. mess up the Maniac of the Pyros. <laughs> do this. See, in the last video that I made, when I went to mess up the Maniac of the Pyros, um, the entire team of Asian people left me dead on the ground. So at the end, no. even after I res them. So yes. Wow. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I 
Now, as with every single time that I showcase stuff like this, I'll build up first. And then... Aw. There we go. Much better. That was a weird reset, but anyway. So the Lepic is opening up with his big, big Boombas. Into the chain. <laughs> That's okay. Oh, the other guys got you. <laughs> I always feel bad for Pyromaniac because all he ever says is lose. You just want to be left alone, bro. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that Pyromaniac is one of the most violent colossi out there. So. Yeah, because he's left alone, bro. Him. I mean, sure. I mean, his stuff has to be stolen, you know? That's how it is. <laughs> there we go. No, 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 don't touch me. Don't target me. Okay, target me then. Lol, they got you. Yeah. Wayne Hopscotch. Okay. Now we have happy, happy fun times. Whee! Happy, happy fun times. Yep, happy, happy fun times. <laughs> Lapu Lapu also in the middle of happy, happy fun times right there. Yeah. in the murder water. Ooh. Darn, that wasn't very smart. Hey, okay, there we go. This is where the fun begins. As long as he ain't targeting me. Big, big Boomba. There we go. So, that's the happy, happy fun times right there. Okay. He's gonna open up one that I happen to have a mutant AA for. Hey, Enduring Legacy Nanotube. Sweet. Okay. So that is that is about it. That is uh, how this Happy functions. Yeah, go ahead. While you do, I'll do the closing. So, ladies and gents, that's the bossing build in general. As you can see, it functions similar to the farming build, but of course, you have more damage. That does, of course, mean that his rage is going to stack up faster. But in general, you'll notice a much faster kill times, even in team play. The primary use of this is that it's so much faster in infiltrations when you're just barreling through and getting right to the end. So you can compare the two side by side. The farming build isn't actually that bad. Um, the damage change is not too drastic, but you will get significantly more 
out of the bossing build as opposed to the farming build. So do take note of that. All right, now before we go, I have to thank our top supporters. So let's start with our first set of goody goody gumdrops. All right. There we go. These are our top channel members right now Princess Star, Track Hoodie, Arcane Silver, and Death Dawning at the plus ultra level. We've got George Tishon, BBS Fang, I3XO, and Nisk at the only fan level. Thank you guys so much. You guys are amazing. Thank you for keeping my channel running. All right. And for the top supporters for our guest, we have Luke Greenfield as the top tipper. All right. Top super chatter is RR Odyssey. Thank you so much. Sebastian Lachance, George Tishon, TX Panda King, Sir Tommy Gun, CU Yuri, um, Death Dawning 982, I3XO, Atomic John, Ted Wu, Phil the Megapine, and BBS Fang. Thank you so much for being top super chatters this month. All right, these are the people that sent Transcendent Super Chats. And TX Panda King is our top channel membership gifter with 15 gifted memberships. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you guys on the next video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, register your support by the link in the stream description, the video description, whatever. Okay, see you guys. Bye.